Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Going up as a Muslim in America, you know, things weren't very different for me, you know, apart from, you know, not eating pork at school and, you know, things were pretty much the same as, as with everyone else. Um, but uh, after 9-11, after there was, I, I was in seventh grade at the time, and um, I guess I was, I was well enough known by, you know, my peers and my teachers where I didn't really see much, but, um, you know, I went to a football game and a teacher from my school was selling, you know, uh, bumper stickers that said, kill them all and let Allah sort them out. And um, I was disturbed by that. My brother was disturbed by that. We told our parents. Our parents raised an issue with the school. And they addressed it, but not to the extent where, you know, we felt was, uh, was enough, you know. And... Um, Uh, going to like a fast food restaurant or you know different restaurants and, and people would make rude comments I would just keep quiet and just just leave but um, recently after the the San Bernardino shooting um, the next the next day I was uh, I was just uh, getting uh, some work done on, on my car and and I was waiting on it and in in the uh, in the waiting room there I could just feel eyes just just sinking, you know, just staring at me and just uh, it, it just felt, you know, very uncomfortable. And, and you know, I, I guess I'm pretty lucky because, you know, apart from from stairs, you know, I, I don't really get much more than that. But but I always hear about the girls who wear the head headscarf, the hijab. They, you know, they sometimes they get yelled at or, you know, people make rude gestures to them as they're driving down the road. Um, so in that sense, I guess I've, I've been pretty lucky, but you know, it's just, it's just uncomfortable going to public places and just having people stare at you and, and judge you just because of the actions of a few crazy individuals. I feel like a lot of good is being done because there, there have a lot, been a lot of people that I've met and I've, I've been able to, you know, increase my understanding of, of different religions, different cultures. And I feel like, um, you know, when they meet me, they're, they're better, they're under, bettering their understanding of Islam um, or, you know, just the, the culture of, of a Pakistani growing up in America. I believe that, you know, it doesn't matter what your faith tradition is, you know, these are all different paths to God. Um, I, I heard a lecture on this concept called nafs. Nafs is, is, is like the self, it's like the ego and, and you know, th they're like the different aspects of it and, and he just goes on to talk about how to address those, those different as aspects of it. So I've, I've been trying to work on that myself, but uh, I think if, if more people were to kind of, you know, take into his perspective and put in check their egos, then the world would probably be a much better place. <laughs> I mean, a hardship that brings you closer to God is more important or better than a blessing that takes you away from God. So the first and foremost is you have to realize this is a wake-up call for us, that we need to be more practicing Muslims or following the Sunnah of the Prophet number one. Number two, it comes to... Um, what are we doing? What steps are we taking to uh, to make this a better community? To to make us uh, uh, better neighbors? To make us you know uh, better citizens? I mean, in general, I mean, if people are scared of me, it's my duty to make sure that they feel comfortable. And this is exactly the the, the hadith that I mentioned at the beginning, the narration of the Prophet. He says that I mean, you're not a complete believer if your neighbor feels unsafe from from you. Right? If they if they if they're uncomfortable due to you. So as being a Muslim, that's that's my duty. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. That you'll not be a true complete believer. Have this this 
you know, essence of faith until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. If you're a complete true believer, you'll be a model citizen. He said, give glad tidings to the strangers, meaning we have to stick to our faith. Right? We have to stick to the sunnah, the way, the life of the Prophet wasallam. So I tell everyone that this is a trial. This is, um, this is a hardship that we have to endure. It really flows from the inside to the outward, right? So when we are, are understanding what the sunnah, the way of life of the Prophet is, then we can lead to bring it out to the people, and especially when it comes to people who are not understanding what Islam or what the teaching of the Prophet wasallam are. So I, I grew up in New Jersey all my life and and just moving from like from New Jersey to Kentucky was a big point because it was my senior year and no, going from knowing everyone to knowing no one, pretty much no one and it's just like that new starting point, that new beginning phase that you can either start off on the right foot, you can start off on the wrong foot and it's just that do you want to choose this path of uh, being more religious or hanging out with the wrong crowd and because nobody's going to judge you because nobody knows you, right? It's that new starting point. It's a new life change. And it's really just keeping yourself in check, keeping yourself going to the masjid and make yourself a better person. I used to go to this organization called Young Muslims like every single week since, since I was in high school. And ever since that, like, I started finding myself to become better. And it's every single week we would meet up and we would usually have like a halakha to talk about like all these topics that we were struggling with and usually that would help me out a lot and you know, we like we would, we would play basketball and we'd feel that brotherhood and that sisterhood within young, young Muslim brothers and young Muslim sisters and it would give me that leadership that when I would go into like high school and stuff like you would know how to deal with like girls, how to deal with drugs, how to say no to these, these type of things. It's helped me through so much in life. And you know, when you're struggling, you don't know where to go to. You have Allah SWT to help you out. You can make the you can, you can you can pray, and you can just find yourself within like even the Quran, just opening it up and like just reciting it. It just it heals you. It's like a, it's the healing of life. Multi-faith uh, events. And those really help because you get everyone together. It's like that brotherhood, that sisterhood with everyone because they really see the religion. They, receive, they see the real beauty of all religions as one. And they, they actually get to know what Islam is, what Christian is, what Jews are. And they see the religion for itself, not just for like, what the media says. And once, once they learn about it, they see the true beauty of Islam.